Hi, this is Victoria Forsyth from Astra, and this presentation is about vertical correlation length for model covariance matrix for formation for anospheric data simulation. Uh, so the IDA4D combines background IRI 2016 model and observations using 3D VAR approach to find the solution. The observations that can be used are the GNSS land total electron content, the radio occultation data and point measurements from ionosons and coherent scatter radars, top sounders in, and the in situ density measurements, plus other not directly related to density measurements such as variance or virtual heights from the ionosons. So the background covariance matrix is an important component of finospheric data assimilation model. It determines the correlation between model errors. Uh, to find the true representation of this matrix is close to impossible uh, because we don't know the truths everywhere on the globe uh, for the density. Uh, plus, this matrix is very large, so it's computationally very heavy to uh, construct it. It has n by n elements where uh, n is the number of grid cells uh, in ida 4 d So we need to find a way to model this uh, matrix. There are three assumptions used uh, for this purpose. The first assumption is that we can separate horizontal and vertical uh, correlations. Uh, another assumption is that vertical correlations can be modeled by Gaussian and horizontal can be modeled by elliptical Gaussian. So this uh, equation explains the formation of this covariance matrix. It can be separated into three different matrices. One would express the uh, variance of model. Uh, the other one would be the Gaussian that represents the vertical correlations of model errors. And the third matrix would explain the horizontal correlation of model errors. Uh, so I have a second presentation here at CEDAR that is fully dedicated to the formation of this third matrix for horizontal correlations. And this presentation would focus on the vertical component. So the goal here is to derive the distribution of vertical correlation lengths based on IRI 2016 model errors. So for the data, in order to find the uh, model errors, we used in coherent scatter radar data from five sites uh, from uh, Rizalit Bay and coherent scatter radar Canada, uh, Pfizer, Milston Hill, uh, Arecibo, and Hikamarka. And we looked at data from 2000 to 2020. And we were interested only in electron density uh, in the vertical profile, vertical direction. These are the modes that I have used uh, to select the data. Okay. Then I used the following fitting procedure, uh, which consists of two steps. So first I would find the NMF2 using IRI model. Uh, so here the black dots show the Hikamarka profile and the yellow one show the expected IRI profile. So then I would find the region uh, which is 0 0.5 of an, M an MF2 of IRI, shown here with gray, and then I would look for the peak of the density inside of this gray region. In case my peak would be somewhere on the boundary uh, of this region, then I would shift the whole thing up or down and uh, repeat this process of finding the peak. So after the peak is found, I would use the Chapman function uh, to fit the top side and the bottom side. Uh, and I would find the coefficients A1 and HMF1 and A2 and HMF2 um, and uh, would use this uh, criteria to determine whether the profile is good to use or no good. So if the scale height HM is greater than zero and less than 150, and if the correlation between data points and the fitted ones are greater than 0 0.8, then I would use this profile further. So then for the model errors, I would find the difference between the IRI expected profile and the fitted profile. So for all five sites, uh, here are the 
numbers shown with black of how many profiles uh, survived this fitting procedure. And so these profiles were used to find the correlations. So that's how the distribution of model errors look like for each radar. So you see that uh, the peaks uh, of the distributions are always centered somewhere around zero. And uh, the positive shift would indicate the overestimation uh, by error density and the negative one, the underestimation. Uh, for example, for Hikamarka radar, somewhere above the NMF2, uh, IRI density is uh, overestimated by the model and below it's underestimated. But for example, for riser C, the density is always underestimated by IRI. The tails are also pretty long uh, of the distributions. They reach uh, 1 to the 10 to the 12th uh, of a meter to the negative third. So the next thing that I did is I found the correlations between each reference point and all of the other points. For example, if we would look at the reference height of 400 kilometers, and the height I compare it to is 500 kilometers. Then uh, on this plot, the position of the reference altitude would be shown as the x-axis, and the distance from this reference up will be positive, down will be negative. So the distance between 400 and 500 would be 100, so that would determine this position on the plot, and the color would show the correlation between all of these points and all of that points. Okay. So you see that the distribution of correlations is not symmetric, uh, meaning that above the reference point, the distribution looks differently as below the reference point. So then I found the positions where the correlations are equal to 0 0.7. The, the, these positions above the reference points are shown with solid line and with dashed line below. So and then I would call them the correlation distances. Uh, and I would find the correlation distance as a function of reference altitude uh, shown in this last panel. So uh, the correlation distance increases exponentially with reference altitude. Uh, plus it has this well-pronounced bump on tail. That is two bumps. And the height of these bumps, meaning that they refer to the same correlation distance, right? but the position is different the position of the reference altitude is different if we look at the um, at the direction above reference point and below reference point. To compare these distributions for different radars, I would plot them all in the same uh, plot, but the color would represent different radar. So you see that the slopes of exponential increase as different for different radars, as well as the position of this bump on tail. Then uh, I used Milston Hill radar uh, to also include some binning of data. If I bin the data in magnetic local time, then uh, this solid black line shows the correlations without introducing the binning and the color shows the, uh, the binned data. Uh, so you see that the variations are not as uh, um, well defined. Uh, so we basically can ignore the MLT variation uh, for the modeling purposes. Uh, for the beating in magnetic in, in the solar flux, 
uh, the situation is a little bit different. So if we bin the data in low, moderate, or high solar flux, um, then the differences between, let's say, high solar flux and low or moderate solar flux is quite large in terms of the correlation distance, uh, about 100 kilometers. So I guess for the modeling purposes, it's worth uh, having uh, data binned also in the solar flux. So for the seasons, it's also not worth to bin the data uh, because uh, all of the lines for winter, summer, and the Quanox seasons, uh, they are very close to each other. So insignificant differences are observed for different seasons. Uh, previous study uh, for the horizontal component of the covariance matrix construction uh, demonstrated that we cannot use day-to-day -day anospheric variability as a proxy uh, for um, modeling of uh, covariance matrix. But actually the same analysis was done uh, using day-to-day -day variability where it was determined as the density at a particular time frame uh, minus the density at the same time frame of the previous day. And the same correlation analysis was done. And you see how the model arrows uh, shown with uh, uh, blue line. So these are the correlation distances found using model arrows. And the red line shows the correlation distances found using day-to-day -day variability. So the shapes are pretty close to each other. So I guess this assumption that day-to-day uh, -day variability can be used as a proxy for a correlation matrix construction, it holds true for the vertical component of this matrix. And uh, this also can be um, one reason uh, why uh, this is true, is that uh, the IRI model was based on incoherent scatter radar data. So the day-to-day -day variability is the only factor that controls the model errors at the radar sites. Uh, whether uh, if we look at the model errors all around the globe, there, the day-to-day -day variability is not the only factor that controls the model error distribution. So for the uh, ionospheric data simulation, uh, we are interested in uh, vertical correlation length uh, distribution as a function of magnetic latitude. So here the dots uh, show the location of incoherent scatter radars and x-axis as the reference altitude. So inside the color represents the correlation distance. Uh, so then I used the uh, linear interpolation in between this data uh, to find the distribution uh, as the fun function of magnetic latitude. And uh, in this case, no binning was implemented. So it's all data from all seasons, for all solar flux conditions and for UT frames. So the vertical component of covariance matrix then can be modeled using these equations uh, where it has Gaussian shape. So when the uh, grid point I is on the same height as grid point J, then correlations would be equal to one. Uh, and uh, if uh, height of grid point I is less than height of grid point J, then we would use this uh, distribution uh, where the correlation distance is a function of the uh, height of reference point uh, plus the magnetic latitude. And if the um, height of the point J is below the reference altitude, then uh, this equation would be used where L sub two is represented on this plot. So in the conclusion, the MLAT distribution of vertical correlation length were derived based on IRI 2016 model errors. 
Uh, some variation with F10.7 solar flux index were observed, but no significant variations were observed for different MLT and season binning. Uh, so IRI derived correlations of model errors were very similar to the one derived from day-to-day -day variability. And uh, also the results of this work can be directly applied to atmospheric data simulation. I have put the metadata uh, into the depository. Uh, with this link, you can access it. It's a NetCDF file that uh, describes the magnetic latitude distribution of uh, vertical correlation length that can be used for the construction of a covariance matrix. If you have any question, please write me an email. Uh, here is my email. Thank you very much for your attention.